Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to matrices. And matrices is just plural for matrix. Um, by definition, a matrix is an ordered array of numbers listed in rows and columns. So think about your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet here. When we did Microsoft Excel, we worked with rows and columns, and there was something in the cell that was at the intersection of the row and column. Okay, so a matrix works in the same with the same kind of principles. It's divided into rows. The rows are uh, horizontal, and the columns are the vertical. Okay, and a matrix is named by its rows first and then it's columns. So this particular matrix would be a three by two matrix because it has three rows and two vertical columns. We could also name a matrix as well. We might um, do something like this and say, oh, that, that matrix is matrix A, but it is a three by two matrix. This matrix would be a two by two matrix or a square matrix. A square matrix has an equal number of rows and columns. Its elements, five, negative two, zero, and X. Yeah, matrix doesn't always have to have numbers as elements. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Here's an example of a column matrix. It's a matrix with one column. And here's another example of a row matrix, and it has one row. And this matrix has one, two, three, four items in its matrix. So as you can see here, elements of a matrix are the numbers, variables, or expressions contained within the matrix. So the matrix above, this row matrix, has the numbers 0 and negative 3. It has the variable y. It also has the expression x plus 3. Now, you may or may not see that in parentheses. Uh, I included that just to emphasize that, that that could be an element of the matrix. You will also see this kind of notation in your matrix. Um, you may read this the first time and think, oh, that's A11, A sub 12, A sub 13, A sub 21. Well, we're really not going to read a matrix that way. We're not going to read those subscripts that way. That's really A11 or 12, okay, A21. And the subscript identifies the location of the matrix by row and then by column. So A11 tells us that that element is in the first row, first column. First row, so A12, first row, second column. A13, first row, third column. So this element right here, A32, is in the third row and the second column. We can do some matrix operations, okay? Some different things we can do with matrices. We can set two matrices equal to each other. We can add and subtract matrices. Matrices must be the same size if we're going to do that. We can scale matrices or make every element of the matrix larger or smaller by some constant. We'll do some of that. That's kind of the distributive property. And we can multiply matrices. Now, there are some different rules for multiplying matrices in terms of what size matrix you can multiply and can't multiply. In order to make things simple right now, uh, we're always going to multiply matrices of the same size, although you'll see that we don't necessarily get the same size as a result of that. Um, but the matrices I give you will all be, you'll be able to multiply those. Let's take a look at some samples and get some experience working with matrices. So this might be a sample problem that we have. 
for what values of the variables is the following statement true? So we have two matrices here. I didn't name them. We could call them matrix A and matrix B. Then we're saying that matrix A is equal to matrix B. Okay. So when we line things up, um, element A11 and element, we'll call it B11 here, um, they're in the same location in those matrix, so in those matrices. So one is equal to one. That's pretty obvious. Let's look at row one, column two. That's X. Well, that's going to line up with row one, column two in our B matrix. So we know if these two matrices are going to be equal, that X must equal two. And we can follow that pattern all the way through. Here in row two, column one, we have a Y. And in this matrix, row two, column one, we have eight. So then we also know that Y is equal to eight. And sure enough, in row two, column two, they're both five. In row three, column one, three corresponds to the Z. So then I know Z is three. And likewise, we know that W is four. So X is two, Y is eight, Z is three, W is four. Those variables correspond with the elements in A or B. In sample two, we'll find the sum of the two matrices. So similar to what we do, did when they were equal, we're going to look at our first row and first column and compare it to the first row and first column, the other one. And this is saying add those two particular elements together. So two plus a negative two is zero. So when I add those up, I get zero. When I look at row one, column two, I've got three, so I'll go to the other matrix. Matrix, row one, column two, and that's a five. I add the three to the five, and I get eight. Likewise, row two, column one, four, row two, column one, and three. I can add those together. Four plus three is seven, and six plus a negative one is five. So when I add these two matrices together, my result is the matrix 0, 8, 7, 5. Sample 3, we're going to find the difference of these between these two matrices. Uh, we have a couple 2 by 3 matrices here, so not a square matrix. So uh, again, let's call this matrix X and matrix Y. And we're going to do the same thing as when we added, but now we're going to subtract. So those items that are in the same cell, the same row and column location for X and Y, those will subtract. So 1 minus 6, negative 5. And I'll put that in row 1, column 1. 9 minus a minus 2, so 9 plus 2 is 11. And 5 minus 0 is 5. So I've taken care of my first row. The second row, 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. I'm going to put that in, the, in space 2, 1. Negative 4 minus 1 is minus 5. And 3 minus 8. Again, wait a minute, I made a mistake. Yeah, no, that's right. And then 3 minus 8 is also negative 5. And that is the answer to that one. In sample problem 4, we're going to find the product. We're going to scale the matrix. So here, I am multiplying every item in my matrix times one half. This could be an integer. I could multiply each one by 10 or five or two, but I chose to use the fraction one half. So my new matrix, well, it's gonna be the same size because all I'm gonna do is make each one of these elements half its size. 
So 1 half of 18, and spot 1, 1 is 9. 1 half of 24, and cell 1, 2, or location 1, 2, that element is 12. Half of 9, 9 halves, and half of 12 is 6. So that's our new scaled down 2 by 2 matrix. Multiplying matrices, that's a little bit more complicated, okay, because we have, you know, a series of rows and columns. So let's multiply these two matrices. And if you follow the highlighting, you'll see that we're going to multiply the elements in the first matrix. We're going to multiply the rows by each of the two columns. So we'll multiply... 4 and 2, those two elements, by negative 1 and 1. And then we're going to multiply 4 and 2 by 3 and 2. And we're going to do a little addition here to make this work out. So we're going to start. I'm going to multiply 4 by negative 1 and then 2 by 1. And we're going to add those together. So 4 times negative 1 plus 2 times 1. And that's going to be our first element in our new matrix. So that will equal negative 4 plus 2, which is equal to negative 2. So that goes in my first location, row 1, column 1. Now I'm going to multiply row 1 times column 2, and that's going to go in the location, row 1, column 2. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing. But now I'm going to multiply 4 times 3. So 4 times 3. And I'm going to add it to 2 times 2. Which is equal to 12 plus 4, or 16. So that goes in my second location. So now I'm going to multiply my second row, once again, by the items in the first column of my second set, and then my second row by the items in the second or the elements in the column of the second matrix. So you can see here in my new matrix, that's going to be the green highlighted area. So I'm going to start with 1 times negative 1 plus 5 times 1. And that equals negative 1 plus 5, or 4. And that's going to go in that first location. And I'm going to repeat the process now for the second column. So 1 times 3 plus 5 times 2 is equal to 3 plus 10, or 13. And that will be take that location. So as you can see now, lost my cursor, as you can see now, I have one more row to do, and I will then multiply this final row in my first matrix times both columns. Based on what I have here, those are going to be purple, and sure enough. So let's go ahead. We'll multiply 0 times negative 1 plus 3 times 1, and that equals 0 plus 3, or 3, and that will go in our first location here. And then we will repeat the process for our second column. So 0 times 3 plus 3 times 2 which is equal to 0 plus 6, or 6. So in our final location, we get the value 6. And so when I multiply these two together, we got our new matrix of the elements negative 2, 16, 4, 13, and 3, 6. So we did get a 
3 by 2 matrix as our result. So there's a basic introduction to matrices, showing how we can multiply matrices, how we can scale matrices, how we can subtract and add matrices, and of course, C2 matrices that are equal to each other. So I hope it's refreshing find some, to learn something new. I hope you've enjoyed the introduction to matrices, and I will see you in class.